Yes! So I have the AMC A-List membership, and what that is is a subscription service where for $19.95 a month, I get three free movies a week. And so from December 2018 to March 2020, I managed to see 177 uh, films in a 66-week period. And then the pandemic ruined everything, but movie theaters are finally back open, and so am I. So let's talk new movies with another installment of Steve Dubs of the Week! Really good. Nice, I like that. This week's installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 10th and 11th week back in theaters, and in that time, I have seen 21 movies in theaters. The week after Labor Day, I only saw one movie. Because I had Monday off, and that's one of the days that I usually don't see movies. So I only saw one movie this past week. But the week before that, I saw two movies. So a combined total of three movies we're covering this week on Steve Stubbs of the Week. So these past two weeks, I saw the following three movies in theater. Candyman. Okay. Hmm. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and once again, Free Guy. Oh. So, uh, I, every week I pick a movie pick the week that I, I that is not necessarily a movie that I like, but one I want to talk about. But first, let's discuss the two movies that were not chosen as my movie pick of the week. Number one, Free Guy. Uh, I am getting very close to catching up with every single solitary movie that is out in theaters. Yes. There's a few, there are only a few movies in theaters, in my very small Midwestern town at least, that I haven't seen. I haven't seen the movie Stillwater, where Matt Damon is has uh, uh, repurposed the Amanda Knox story to earn an Oscar nomination and then there's the movie Don't Look 2, I didn't see Don't Look 1 but I don't think I have to see Don't Look 1 and Don't Look 2 because I already saw the film it was called Blind Fury and it starred Rutger Hauser yeah. as a blind guy who was also a ninja, so I've already seen both of Don't Look and Don't Look 2 so I don't feel, I don't really want to see it. And then whatever the Oscar bait is that Sean Penn just released, Sean Penn just released a movie, and it stars him and his daughter. Okay. And I, I, have, I have no interest in seeing that. So instead of seeing one of those three movies that I haven't seen, I just went and saw Free Guy again. It's just dumb fun, and there's a bunch of video game references in it. And the story is, is interesting, and it's a pretty good movie, but, but man, uh, the guy, Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds, he just carries the movie. And then the bad guy is Taito Waititi. Yeah. And so it, it's just win-win. It's such a fun film. It's dumb, fun, and I love it, and I've seen it twice in theaters now, and I loved it both times. I laughed out loud both times good and it's just such a fun movie and then my second movie that was not chosen as my movie pick of the week and full disclosure this was difficult because out of the other two movies that I saw either one of them could have been my movie pick of the week either one of them so I flipped a coin Okay. Who would, who would be my movie pick of the week. And the one that lost the coin toss was the new film Candyman. They made three Candyman movies in the 90s. Candyman 1, Candyman 2, Return to the Flesh, and Candyman 3, Look Who's Candymanning. I don't fucking know. But this new Candyman film is a direct sequel to the first movie. Okay. A lot of people assume that it's a reboot, but no, it's a 100% direct sequel. And, and, and here's the thing. I, I've been clear about this on the podcast, but... Uh, uh, growing up, I was an absolute wuss who hated horror movies. Yes. 
I absolutely hated horror movies, didn't like watching them, didn't watch them a lot. I wasn't a big fan of horror movies. And then I was in a robbery at work, and when a crazed uh, drug-addled robber points in live fully loaded gun to your head and says, give me all of the money in the safe or I'm going to fucking kill you. Uh, you realize that uh, House of a Thousand Corpses isn't that bad of a movie to watch. Yeah. So, uh, from the robbery on, I've been slowly but surely trying to catch up on horror movies that I haven't seen and horror franchises and yada yada yada. I recently saw this ridiculous map that charted out the timeline of the Halloween movie franchise. Really? Okay. And it's just ridiculous, because like, here's Halloween, here's Halloween 2, way over here is Halloween 3, here's Halloween 4, 5, and 6, here's Halloween 7 and 8 on a separate line, here's Halloween 9 and 10 that were Rob Zombie, so they're over here in the corner, we don't talk about it, and here are the new ones. They're working on three of them. One has been released. The second one's about to be released. And they're a direct sequel to number one, but not number two through five. And it's like, oh, my God, this is insane. I didn't realize how insane the Halloween movies were. I guess I didn't see all of them. I guess I saw one, two, and three and Rob Zombie, and that was it. So I recently downloaded all of the Halloweens. And that's going to be insane to watch. I was a big fan of the third one. The third Halloween? Yeah, I was a really big fan of the third Halloween. When I I, was a kid, I haven't seen it since the original and since its original run, and I really, really need to go back to it. I I have no judgment on this movie at all. I did, of course, hate it like everybody else when it came yeah. out, but more okay. Um. Uh, but go ahead. Hmm? <laughs> I, I lost what I was saying. Okay. Uh, so the Candyman franchise, how they would show Halloween on TV, and I wouldn't watch it because it was too scary as a yeah. kid. And then they'd show Halloween two, and I wouldn't watch that because if I'm too scared to watch Halloween one, I'm not going to watch Halloween two. And then suddenly TV is showing Halloween 3 and suddenly there's fucking witches and uh, Stonehenge and they're using it to make kids' heads fucking melt or turn into bugs or some shit. And that I would watch on TV. Because it wasn't that scary, it wasn't that gory, it's not like they're cutting out a bunch of shit. Yeah. And so I would watch Halloween 3 fairly regularly like every other Halloween growing up so it, but I never watched the other Halloweens until I was older so I'm going to be catching up on the Halloween but one horror franchise I never saw or never caught up on was freaking Candyman I never saw any of the Candyman movies uh, so yeah. when so I'm like oh they're making another Candyman oh I'm not really interested in that and then I saw that it was written by Jordan Peele yeah. Who wrote, who wrote Get Out and also wrote Us, which I loved. I saw that like three or four times in theater when that came out. And so I read the original story that Candyman was based on. It's in one of Clive Barker's Books of Blood uh, books. I read the short story and then I saw the original Candyman. And then I went to go see the new Candyman movie, and that was the absolute best thing, because I thought that the new Candyman was going to be like a reboot, but no, it's a direct sequel, so I'm really glad that I put the effort in and read the original story and watched the, origi watched the original movie before I went to go see the new one. But it is a great movie, and I really liked it because it felt like the first Candyman movie was a black story, but told from a rich white person's perspective. Because the, the, the star of the movie is like this rich white woman who's trying to get her 
doctorate at a rich college. Yeah. You know? So, this new Candyman movie is that same black story, but finally told from a black perspective, and I really liked it. It was really good. I was really interested in it, and uh, yeah, I freaking loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was really good. because really I, I, I have not been hearing outstanding things about it yet, but again, you know, the horror community is not necessarily any better than the Star Trek community or the Star yes. Wars mo- community, where, where it's like, my God, it's new, I hate it. Yeah. It's not Tony Todd. Well, how the fuck old is Tony Todd now? Tony Todd does make an appearance in the film. Yeah, good. So, I was happy about that. Yeah. He does make an appearance. They, they discuss in the movie about how uh, Candyman isn't just one person, but a number of people who were wronged over the decades, over yeah. the centuries, and Tony Todd was one of them. So he does make an appearance, but, uh, uh, but, uh, and then during the credits, it, 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 it sort of tells the story of some of the other Candyman throughout history, and it's, it's, so I stayed through the entire credits, and, oh, surprise, surprise, the entire theater who I saw the movie with, comprised entirely of white people, did not stay for the credits. Really surprising, huh? <laughs> I wonder how they felt about the, the part where the corrupt white police officers got their comeuppance. So uh, the I, original Candyman, I I felt was like too good of a movie to get like cult status in the way that Halloween or Friday the Thirteenth did. Yeah, because there was just too much actual plot with Candyman. Yeah. And why he was killing people. But I am very interested in seeing this new one. Yeah, it's really Especially good. Especially with Jordan Peele, because he's been fucking kicking ass. I still find that very surprising, because, like, he's the comedy guy. Yeah. You know, He's like great. He didn't direct it, but he wrote the entire script, and damn, it's a good script. It's really good. But in all these years, I've still not fully accepted Peter Jackson doing Lord of the Rings either. So yes. you know, absolutely. I mean, like, you're the fucking Meet the Feebles guy. No, you 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 don't do this. You, you wrote make the fart sinking. joke movies. You wrote the the sodomy song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh, so, m- finally, my Steve Subs movie pick of the week is Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And I want to start off discussing the new Shang-Chi movie by giving a shout out to the uh, camera first assistant in the credits. Because I, I pay close attention to the end credits. And I just wanted to give a shout out to the camera first assistant, a man by the name of Todd Schlopey. Oh. S-C- the Schloper. S C A L O P Y. His name was Todd Schlopey. If you think you had a bad childhood, I want you to think about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings camera first assistant, Mr. Todd Schlopey. And think about his childhood. Yes. Todd Schlopey's childhood. Yes. Because I guarantee you, people were not nice to Todd Schlopey. Okay, so... Just just like the, the assistant paint supervisor in Justice League. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. What was his name again? Uh, I, I forget. I would have to look him up. Yeah. It's okay. So, uh... I felt that Black Widow was a good movie, 
but not a good Marvel movie. Yeah. And I was just really disappointed in Black Widow. I felt that it should have been released right after uh, Civil War. But it didn't. But the reason why it didn't happen right after Civil War is that former Marvel CEO Ike Perlmutter was an asshole. Yes. Former Marvel CEO Ike Perlmutter was a real fucking son of a bitch. Originally, they wanted a woman to be the bad guy in Iron Man 3, but Ike Perlmutter put his foot down and said, If you have a woman bad guy, then no one will buy action figures. So get rid of the chick. And it's like, oh, fuck you, Ike Perlmutter. They recently announced, and I talked about this on the Pope on Film uh, Facebook group, but uh, they were working on a live-action Marvel uh, New Warriors live-action TV show, which features a, a, a team of young superheroes trying to make a difference. And the, it, it, a lot of it was going to be based on the Great Lakes Avengers. Yeah. Which was like, a, a, like the D-list Avengers team. And it featured one of my favorite actresses, Lily from AT&T, and she was also the one that the captain had a crush on on the show Other Space, okay. which I was obsessed with for a while. She is now the, like, AT&T girl, I think. Or is it Verizon? I think it's AT&T. Anyway, uh, it would have starred her as Squirrel Girl, and they recorded a pilot, but Ike Perlmutter canceled the pilot because, quote, it was too gay. Okay. So now Ike Perlmutter has stepped down as his role as the Marvel CEO, and there has been a lot of buzz over the past couple of days because the guy who directed the pilot that was canceled, uh, clips and snippets of it have, star have started to leak. And people are really uh, rallying over the fact that we could have had a live-action Squirrel Girl, but the former CEO, who is a son of a bitch, and who, whose idea—it was his idea to make that goddamn Inhumans TV show. Uh oh. So fuck this guy, Ike Perlmutter. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that uh, now that Ike Perlmutter has stepped down, and maybe we will get to see this. New Warriors TV show with a live action Squirrel Girl. Fingers crossed. But but yeah, Ike Perlmutter was the one who was like, Black Widow? You mean a comic book movie starring a chick? I don't think so. So now they release the Black Widow movie and it's like, eh, I don't really care about this character who just died anymore. Yeah. You know? So I was really disappointed with it. I... I, I I just didn't like. Well, you know, I I I mean, just kind of the premise of you have to rescue abused, highly trained killer assassins. Yeah. You know, I I mean, I ha I like. How are they holding highly trained killer assassins? Yeah. To begin yeah. with, like, you know, and, and then I was kind of underwhelmed with how they handled the other characters, like, um, oh god, I always, I always want to keep calling them fucking Crimson Dynamo. Yeah, uh, uh, the Red Guardian. The Red Guardian, yeah. I, I mean, I, I wanted I wanted to see more of that. I wanted to see more... Okay, so now she's on this team, and we're doing superhero shit. And it wasn't. It was way more subdued. Yeah, it was like a family drama with a few action sequences, but not a comic book movie. Uh, FYI, uh, the, I just saw on Twitch that this is episode... Oh, oh, episode 415, Suicide Squad. Okay. I thought it said episode 414 disaster movie for a second, but no. It's highly possible. I'm having a hard time figuring out the, the, 
the Twitch thing, and I, I, I don't know where all of our shit's gone. So yeah. I don't know if they're pulling it after we record it or whatever. I, I'm not sure what's up with Twitch. Yeah, uh, I'm confused by Twitch. My wife is. My wife has been streaming lately. She's been doing pretty well with herself. Uh, but this movie, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, this is a fucking Marvel movie. Oh, good. This is everything I wanted Black Widow to be. It's entertaining. It's fun. There's really great action sequences. And the movie fucked with me. Let me tell you something. The Marvel TV shows are ruining my ability to watch Marvel movies. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, oh, uh, welcome to our mystic kingdom. It's in another dimension, and here we live in peace. We used to be attacked by this evil, but we locked it up in this cave. You see this giant red cave? That's where the evil lives. The red evil. This is where the red evil comes from, and sometimes it wants to get out. But we are the keepers of the red evil. We make sure that the red evil is here, and, and it'll never escape. But sometimes it whispers to people and tells them that I will give you the one thing you desire if you come to this mystic kingdom and break me out of this cave. And I'm sitting there in the theater going, God damn it, I know it's not Mephisto. Yeah. I know it's not Mephisto. Because he's Dr. But Strange it, right now. What is it, Mephisto? And it's like, fucking, of course it's not Mephisto. But the goddamn internet, YouTube, Twitter, and the live-action Marvel TV shows have convinced me that everything's fucking Mephisto now. Yeah. So that's fucking me up. But Shang-Chi is fucking great, and it's fucking funny. It's so funny because Shang-Chi is... Uh, just by the way, just, just quickly by the way, I do want to talk more about this in Bunny Versus, so go okay. ahead. Cool. Uh, Shang-Chi's best friend is played by actress Aquafina, and she's just so realistic, and I absolutely fucking love her. And uh, I don't want to... Maybe light spoiler alert, but my favorite character in the episode <coughs> is back in this film, and I'm very excited. <coughs> my favorite <coughs> actor... In the <coughs> back in Shang Chi, and I was, I, I popped in the theater when he showed up. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, he's back! I was hoping he would come back, and now he is back, and I am so fucking excited. And he was also one of the best parts of the movie. I really like Shang Chi, and I might go see it again next week. I. It's just fun. I, I I realized for the first time that Aquafina was in this movie. I'm sitting here and I'm doing things. The TV's playing. Something came up about Shang Chi, and all of a sudden I heard Danny DeVito. Yeah, I'm freaking. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely adore her so much. So Shang Chi, movie pick of the week. It's an actual Marvel movie as opposed to Black Widow, and. Uh, Although, I do like Black Widow, if for no other reason the May Queen from Midsommar is in it. And because of that, I like Black Widow, but uh, Shang-Chi is, is like a return to form, and I'll definitely see it a couple of more times in theaters if I can. So that's it for Steve Stubbs of the Week this week. Next week, James Wan, who came up with the... Uh, Saw movie franchise, the Insidious movie franchise, the Conjuring movie franchise. He has a new horror movie out, and I'm so excited to see it. Yay! Yeah. Uh, and maybe Shang-Chi again. I don't fucking know, but uh, join us next week for more up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week! And cut on that.